Crossing the United States to his native South Africa, Nolan continues to push barriers and inspire people to inspire themselves. And you could be next. Join Nolan's seven-day online groundbreaking program called Obstacles Make Me Stronger, aimed at teaching you how to overcome any obstacles you may face, break barriers, be innovative, and take control of your life. For more information, check out Obstacles Make Me Stronger, now on YouTube. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to Inspirational Journeys Through Life with Straight Talk with Nolan. My name is Nolan Pillay, and I am your host today. I have a journey, you have a journey. But how many of us actually share our journeys to inspire others? Now remember, we share our journeys to inspire people and help people along the way. Now before we continue, this content is going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on Anchor FM, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google as well. So please go and like our content because the more you like our content and share our content, it allows us to share or come with new valuable content like the one today that we have today. So today it's our pleasure and honor to welcome Roman Mironov to our show, Inspir Inspirational Journeys Through Life. Roman is a coach trained by the legend, Tony Robbins. He's, he's been porn free for eight plus years. And this is our topic for discussion today where Roman is going to share his strategy and motivation to help you do the same. If you are sick of porn addiction, this is where you want to be in this call. If you want to maximize your potential instead, this is the call that you need to be on. And remember, you can stop porn addiction in 30 days. And we're going to share a, a link, or Roman's going to share a link with us at the end of this episode, where you'll have a free tutorial session as well. All you have to do, as mentioned that you're a listener of Straight Talk with Nolan and Roman. And you'll also get a further 30% discount as, get, as well. So once again, welcome to Inspirational Journeys Through Life, Roman. Good to have you in our show today. Hi, Nolan. Thank you for having me. And I'm rolling up my sleeves to share my story, my journey. Awesome. Thank you. You know, we've been trying to get in touch with each other for a few weeks now, and I think maybe months and, you know, I'm just so grateful that we finally got to sit down and speak to each other about a topic that I would say not many people speak about. Uh, people are afraid to talk about a problem like this. People hide behind their, their doors. And this is where we want to open up the discussion and have open, vulnerable discussions like this. And we all know it's a safe place as well. So... You know, just to start off with, uh, tell us where you're from, firstly. Where, where, you, where are you calling in from? Which country? Yeah. Yes, I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Coming right at you. So is it, is it like cold there now as well? Is it your winter? Uh, look, Toronto uh, Toronto is, is located on this huge lake, Ontario, and I think it... it determines a lot about our climate so it's it's kind of warm so today it's minus two celsius minus two no, not <laughs> well, that bad it's not bad because you're used to it right <laughs> i'm in south africa we don't have minus two. yeah but the, uh, <laughs> funny enough if you drive 100 kilometers up south i mean up north it's going way colder there they have snow all the time in winter and they might be having like minus 10 right now. So it's, it's very well, different. Well, you should be grateful for the minus two then, right? Such beautiful yeah. weather. Awesome. Exactly. I cool. appreciate Roman, it. Roman, so let's, let's get into it. Uh, so, so firstly, you know, I know you've been on a journey uh, with this topic of porn addiction as well. How does one really know they have a porn addiction? <sighs> okay, there are quite a few signs. First of all, it's it's compulsive. You cannot control it. You get an impulse and you do it. And it becomes excessive to a point where it's eating up too much of your time. Then if you are already in a relationship, then you feel that it is diminishing your presence in the relationship. You're just not there. You're not engaged. And, and you see that your partner feels that. 
you're you don't you're not paying enough attention to them or if you don't have a relationship you are not developing it you're not building the social skills required because you now have this alternative sex and you don't want real sex i would say that these are these are the most common reasons and one last thing i would say is this a lot of people they get addicted to porn when when they're very young their early teenage years let's say 13 years old they are horny and it's it's kind of okay i don't like the idea but oftentimes they don't have access to real sex but then as they get older they teach their brain that they have this coping mechanism that whenever they feel down they can actually press this quick dopamine fix button they get some pleasure and now the brain goes to this as a default coping mechanism that's why when they feel lonely later instead of going out and getting a partner getting a girlfriend or a boyfriend building those social skills they just keep pressing this button until it really drives them into the ground and i think that this is the final stage of addiction i i talk to people who get depressed because of watching porn so much that they can't get out of bed if you are severely depressed and you still do and you still do what's called pmo porn masturbation orgasm you th th that's when you need to realize that you're in, in trouble wow i never knew there was something like pmo huh that's yeah. Right. yeah there so you go was, and you know what with porn addiction as well the, the way you mentioned it is it's not really affecting just the guy right the man it's also women that are actually into this Yeah, you're right. Way less, at least in my subjective experience. I'll say two things. In my coaching experience, when women reach out to me, usually it's for the guys. So they have a guy in their life, let's say husband, who's watching porn, and the woman wants to help the husband. No, she doesn't want to help herself because women don't get addicted to porn as much as guys do. And now there was this amazing study back in 2022, a study from Switzerland. They they studied 100,000 people. And what they realized is that actually, whereas porn is not good for guys, it has a negative impact on their sexual performance, their sexual competence, and the sexual satisfaction of their partner. But with women who watch porn, all these parameters, they actually improved. Wow, that is interesting stats, right? Gee, it was... So, I, I mean, especially with, where do you think this whole thing started? I mean, if we go back just to the same generations ago, right? We know the internet now currently is like a huge hive of porn activity. You see it all the time. You know, uh, on social media, for example, not, not even porn, right? If you just look at the way social media has molded people, I see a lot of people out there who are trying to be somebody they're not you know, with the filter system, etc. So they kind of like using this as a platform to attract people and the wrong people in most cases to them as well. So if we go back to the generation, where do you think porn originated from? Look, I would say this. We always wanted porn. We always craved this, the images and it goes back thousands of years. Of course, it was a different type of porn back then, but people always wanted this, and this is understandable. I think this is how it works. We have the sexual instinct, which is especially the case for guys. We're super horny, and this instinct drives us, drives us to get the best mate. Now, the porn and those images, they hijack this mechanism. Instead of going out there, pushing ourselves to get the best mate, we can now just look at a picture, look at a video, and see that amazing mate. And this is literally rewires our brain. Because instead of putting this evolutionary pressure on ourselves, what we do now is we simply accept the affordable and the accessible image. And I think that this is why we made so much progress as a humanity back then. Actually, we did not have access to porn like we do today. And I think going forward, this 
th this will cause degeneration. And I, I feel for those people who are struggling with porn now. I have a son who is 13 years old, and I believe that looking at him, at his classmates, at his friends, I think that he, yeah, he is facing this risk of degeneration. It's just yeah. too accessible. And, and you're right, it's too accessible, right? While you was actually mentioning that, something else came to my mind. What if the, what if the guy, for example, right, is not confident enough to go out and find a female partner and he's like totally he feels very low of himself low self-esteem low self-love etc and he goes and uses porn as an easy way out right because firstly it allows him to get that instant satisfaction for himself how do you convince a person like that that hey you do need a partner at some point Well, there are many ways. I think the best way is just to show him, to show him that it's possible. Take him outside, approach other people in front of him, show him that it's possible to have a conversation and, and a fun conversation with another human being so that they realize that this guy realizes that this is a real thing. It can actually happen. It doesn't have to be virtual. And it starts with just talking to other people. I, I would say this. The other thing is simply showing the damage that is obvious. There is, there is so much evidence on the internet, people just sharing their stories about how porn was damaging to them. Go read those stories. Let's say right now, if you're wondering, you're, you're listening to Nolan's podcast and you're wondering, is that, is that a real thing? Is it, is it worth doing? Should I really try quitting porn? Go to Reddit. And there are two, I think, yeah. So one, one big thread is called, subreddit is called NoFap, N-O-F-A-P. And the other one is called Porn Free. Check out. There are so, so many stories. And let's say you're very young. You're 14 years old right now. And you don't think that this is a problem because you're horny. You watch some porn, you jerk off, you feel good, you forget about this. But this thing will progress. Your addiction might get worse. So go now and read the, the accounts of those people who got to the final stage where they're 100% unmotivated, lazy, and they cannot change their life. Wow. Very interestingly, so to, to, to everyone that's listening, even parents out there, adults as well, this is some conversation you need to be having with your kids at some point and alert them to the dangers of pornography as well. Because, you know, like Roman has said, the internet is so accessible. Anybody can just create a fake account and go on to like Pornhub or one of these porn sites and just watch this. And once you start watching it, boom, it's like a drug, right? Uh, it, it, you, you become addicted to it and you always crave it uh, as well. So very uh, interesting for youngsters out there. Uh, if, if you are, take Ron, Ro, uh, Roman's advice. It's no fib, right? Uh, that's the one. They need to go to no fib. And what's the other one? Yeah, the other one is porn free. Not free <laughs> porn, <laughs> but porn free. Yeah. So, so they, if they just search for this, they'll be able to pick up these tutorials and and have access to understand it a bit better. These are not tutorials. These are. I, I was talking about Reddit.com. These are subreddits. So, is, is Reddit not like a porn site? <laughs> Seriously, no. So sometimes it is sometimes some threads are but oh, okay. no yeah it, it's a it's a social it's a one kind of a social media a huge social media oh, wow. channel okay I'll, I'll even check it out as well <laughs> so, roman so interesting enough right we know what uh what porn does you you've given us some clues what it actually does to the brain apart from having you so addicted that you you can't really you don't want to leave your home. You just want to be in it full time as well. What are, how do you heal? How do you heal your brain from pornography? What are some of the measures one can take? I think that it takes three components. 
and three components in a system. I, I believe that you can actually quit watching pornography with willpower alone. But if you do this, this is you're making this unnecessarily difficult. You can make the process easier, not easy, but easier. You need three components. First of all, you need commitment. You need to realize that this is a battle. Addictions, and especially porn addiction, is a very deadly enemy. First of all, it's super addictive. It's even, I, I sometimes think that it's even more addictive than drugs because drugs are less accessible, whereas porn is accessible immediately and it's super affordable. You don't need money to get it. You're paying with your time and your productivity and, and your, ultimately your life. Now, this is a war and you need to go into this battle as a soldier. You can't run away from the enemy. You have to stand your ground. You have to defeat yourself, your country, your life, your family. That's your commitment. And when it comes to commitment, when I'm talking about, let's say, someone taking my free course, I recommend that commitment in practical terms translates into doing one hour of work on the tasks in the course every day. Now, the second component, and to continue with this military analogy, is devising a system, a battle plan. You are like a general who is creating that battle plan to make sure that the fight, the war goes on not in a haphazard way, but in a very strategical and a very conscious manner. You need that plan. And once again, my course will help you build that plan so that it, it takes you step by step through a process that actually shows you that if you feel an urge, you do this. If you feel down, you find different types of sustainable pleasure or stoic pleasure that will actually give you, that will actually increase your mood in the moment so that you don't relapse. And finally, you need a surgeon, someone who is your accountability partner, who will push you to actually to, to stay strong, to stay committed, to someone who will call you out if you relapse. And this could be a coach, a mentor, a parent, a person who is close to you, a friend, someone who is really who is really has your best interests at heart. You need that accountability because with porn addiction, it's so secretive and having accountability is actually breaking you out of the cycle of those empty promises that you are making to yourself every time. I'm not going to do it again. I, I won't relapse again, but this is all in your head. You need to get out of your head and share this with another person. This mm -hmm. is key. So many good points you mentioned in there as well. The accountability partner being one, because if you look at life in general, apart from porn addiction or anything, if you're after like career goals, so one needs to see this as a goal that they want to achieve at the end of the day, right? Uh, and the goal is to move away from porn addiction. So this is where the accountability partner, I feel very strongly about accountability partners because I know it works. And like you said, Roman, so you, you said in, in, in the right way that without that accountability partner, you will relapse as well. The other thing I picked up, and, and this is such a sensitive topic as well, because when one gets addicted to porn, right, what else can it actually lead to? Because we know of a lot of, we, we know rape statistics have picked up in a big way, right? So, so thank you, Roman. You know, there's so many golden nuggets that have come out uh, from just uh, that chat alone. And accountability partner, I totally agree. It's not only about your porn addiction, it's about anything in life. You do need an accountability partner and it does work because if you don't have that partner, you will relapse, right? And that's the danger part. The, the other thing I'm picking up as well and it came to mind now is, you know, with porn addiction, it can lead to so many other things out there as well. Weird stuff, not weird stuff, real stuff, like rape, for example. Do you think, is there any stats around people that are so addicted to porn that they take it a step further and they go into rape and abuse and things like that? This is an amazing question. 
and uh, I think I should uh, I should give two answers. The first one, I don't know of those deaths, but we have a lot of evidence, a lot of anecdotal evidence and accounts of people who went to prison for rape or even for murder, even for serial serial murder. And they say that I watched a lot of porn. So that should ring a bell. But at the same time, it's very funny because it's like this dichotomy. A lot of people would attack me and say, Roman, why are you saying porn is bad? It's not bad. It's actually preventing rape because it's giving people that outlet for their sexual energy instead of having it bottled up in them and then becoming angry and harassing other people, raping them. No, they have an outlet in porn, which is, I mean, the, there is some point to it. I agree, I agree to it. And that's why I say, I think that the answer is somewhere in the middle. I think that pornography is not good for your brain because it desensitizes you to real life experiences, real sex experiences. It fries your dopamine receptors. It's very addictive, just like hard drugs. So you need to quit it 100%. And then what you're left with is masturbation. And maybe you overdo it. So quit this excessive masturbation and just do it once in a while for that release that you're talking about. I mean, I'm addressing that person, but without porn. And then make sure that you don't use this as an excuse not to get into a, a real loving relationship. Very well said, uh, because the, the thing that comes to mind, and you you said it in so many different ways, porn is really fake. It's, it's not the real thing, right? Versus having like a r real relationship with someone and using that sexual energy on them versus just using it unnecessarily as well. So if people out there that are watching porn, and if you think this is real, it's not real, it's a movie. People are acting, they're getting paid. They're getting paid millions of rands just to, to show up like that and put their bodies at risk of STDs. Of course, I'm sure they're getting tested, etc. but there are so many other risks involved in it as well. So it's not all fluffy the way people would think as well. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, maybe share with us what, uh, some of the benefits of being porn free. Well, I, I would share my own benefits just to give an example. First of all, when I finally quit porn, when my marriage fell apart, my wife divorced me and I was, I found myself at 32 living again with my parents. I moved in, I moved in with them. I lived literally in their basement and I was watching porn. I had no social skills. That was the reason why I ruined my marriage. And I realized that if I just keep going like this, I will stay single forever and I will just be driving myself into the ground. So I said, no, I will give up porn in order to create, in order to get a girlfriend. So this quitting porn gave me motivation and the energy to go pursue building those social skills and getting a girlfriend. It also gave me confidence because I, I, get, I gained momentum. I realized that I have the strength to stop watching porn, made me feel more competent believe in myself more, I became more confident. I also, people told me that I have, I now have better energy. I was not hiding anymore. I did not feel guilty. I did not feel shameful. So my, my energy improved and I, I became more fun to be around. That, that also helped with social skills, by the way. I got more energy at the gym. I started to hit my gym records at, at back then because I, I have this genetical setup where if I ejaculate, I don't feel exactly good the next day. I have this what's called ejaculation hangover. So whenever it, when I was masturbating every day, I would be in this hangover, weird hangover all the time. Now, without that ejaculation hangover, I, I get amazing results at the gym. And let me also say this. I think I honestly, I, I just have more time and I'm more productive and I'm, I'm also more, more creative. I think that the sexual energy, this is something that we can transmute 
just like Napoleon Hill wrote in his book, Think and Grow Rich. We can transmute it into creativity. And it doesn't mean that I am, I'm, I'm painting now or writing music. No, um, let's say I'm creating with my YouTube videos that might, you know, help someone. Wow. I like that. Transmute that energy. And, and Napoleon Hill says it well. I've got it in his book there as well. Uh, Think and Grow Rich. And, and you're absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, you can use that energy and focus it in other ways as well. And it's not saying one should just give up like sex completely. I mean, there's a partner for that as well. One is saying don't get addicted to porn because it can be detrimental to you at the end of, end of the day. And look at the benefits that Roman has experienced on his own that he's actually sharing with everyone. I mean, losing a marriage uh, after 13 years, he said, right? Uh, can't really be a good thing as well, but you've been through the phase and you've learned through this now and through this knowledge, you want to educate others as to your experiences. And that's what I find very fascinating. A lot of people are afraid to share their stories and therefore it's inspirational journeys through life. And what you're sharing with us is, how you've overcome porn addiction and how you want to now educate others and not just others. There's a lot of people out there. <laughs> There's millions, right? Uh, people that are addicted to porn because it is so accessible as well. What strategy can people use to, uh, to quit porn? What kind of strategies can they use? And of course, one of them I'm really going to uh, speak a lot about is getting onto your programs because I think those will really help a lot of people, but what other strategies can they use? Okay, let's go over some of those. The, the, funny enough, they are very simple. They sound simple, but they're not easy to do. So first of all, you, you need to make sure that you keep yourself busy. When you have a free day and you don't know what you're going to do, the chances of you relapsing, they just go through, through, through the sky, through the roof. So make sure that you create a schedule for your day and you're very, very busy all the time. It also helps to get yourself busy with a new project, a new challenge, building a new skill. This is super helpful. You need to build a habit, what I call a replacement habit to, to act upon when you have an urge. Right now, you have this idea that when you have an urge, you do a PMO session. You have an urge, you do a PMO session. Now you need to replace that old habit with a new one because you don't want to just drop the habit. That's too difficult. Replacing it is a little bit easier. So what are some of the best ways? Meditation or prayer? Taking a walk. I told you it will be simple. Or exercising. Let's say you're at home, you're alone in your room, fall down on your floor, do push-ups, ideally to failure. And when you get up, you forget about that urge. So it's very helpful. Make sure, let's take this one, the last one. You have to admit, this is, a, this is not exactly a strategy, but you need to realize that you are addicted. You need to be honest with yourself. One of the biggest problems with this addiction is that people lie to themselves and they rationalize it by saying, it's natural. I don't think it is, but people say this. I, I don't think that watching people, other people having sex on a screen, I don't think it's natural. And I don't think it's natural having sex with your hand. It's all the time. It's sometimes, once in a while, it's fine. But people end up using this as an excuse. And the second excuse is that they have a hard life, they're struggling, and they say, this is my pleasure. This is a natural type of pleasure that I can have. Let me have it. Next thing they know, a few years down the road, they are super addicted, they're depressed, and they can't get out of the state because they fried their dopamine receptors. Now they can't feel pleasure from anything else and they're not motivated by anything else. So you need to realize that you are addicted. This is a real thing and it's driving you into the ground and you need to stop it unless you recognize this and admit this to yourself. Quitting it is almost impossible. You need to be honest and say, I am an addict. I have this bad habit. 
it's it's a bad habit, just like smoking, just like overeating and eating junk food, just like hard drugs, just like depression, just like looping on negative thoughts and criticizing people. These are all bad habits and porn addiction is one of them. And it's one of the worst ones. So with that awareness comes the freedom from porn. So just being consciously aware of what you do with your time as well, because I'm sure when you start watching porn, I mean, before you know it, it's one hour, two hours, 10 hours, it's all gone. And at the end of it, your whole day has been wasted as well, right? Because you just wasted your whole day. Uh, I like what you mentioned about stop being in denial, because the moment one acknowledges that they have a problem with anything, that's the only time that they're going to sit back, start thinking about it and addressing it or finding ways on how to do better. And this is with any addiction, right? Be it drugs, alcohol, uh, mainly porn, because that's so accessible now as well. But the point that Roman is, is making to everyone, to all the audience that's listening is, this can be detrimental to you at a later stage in your life. You may not see it now. You may not realize it now, but it will. And you don't want to be that person after about 10 years where you've lost all your social skills. You're even afraid to go out because you don't know how to connect with other people as well. So it's quite important that you realize the dangers of it now and spot it. You know, do you think anything can be done, Roman, about the sites that offer porn to people? Do you think there's ever been like some government gazette that kind of tried to lock them down or so? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I, well, let me say this. When it comes to regular porn, nothing can be done. And probably nothing should be done because betting it, I don't think that this is the solution. No, it's, it's, it's a question of explaining how how problematic this behavior is. I think this, it lies in education. We're not, it, it's, it's like with, we're not trying to say that masturbation is bad. No, it is healthy. It is only unhealthy when it becomes excessive. It, it's just like with alcohol. We're not banning, we know that alcohol is not good for you, 100%. Many studies on that, but we're not banning it. We're just making sure that people understand that overdoing it can be too bad. Now, I'm also grateful that we do have bans. Let's say we have bans on sites that promote kids porn. And I'm grateful for that. Our government does a good job of persecuting those guys, finding them, and actually locking them up. So I would say this. Yeah, true, because that leads to a lot of things, human trafficking, et cetera, as well. Because you know, there's, there's full-grown adults out there that tend to just pry on these these kids because of their, their porn addiction and their sexual urges as well. You know, you mentioned about masturbation as well. So do you think that it's okay for a person to masturbate without watching porn? Yes, that's the second step. So the first step is quitting porn. Porn is not good. Makes, you know, makes your brain like Swiss cheese because it kills you. It kills your motivation. Why do you want to, to improve yourself if you, because why do you want to improve yourself? Because you want to get pleasure. But now, why would you want to get pleasure from self-improvement if you can get instant pleasure from pushing a few buttons? So quit that. Don't stop killing your motivation. But, but then you, you end up with only excessive fapping, excessive masturbation. You got to stop that as well because excessive everything is not good especially masturbation, because you're depleting yourself in so many ways. So reduce it to quote unquote healthy levels, whatever it is for you, maybe once a week, maybe once in five days, maybe once in two weeks. And the final step, get a partner, get into an amazing relationship and replace the remaining, what remains of that masturbation with real sex, because it's incomparable. I like that profoundly said, uh, replace it with by having a partner who you can actually enjoy your sexual encounter with as well, right? Instead of just masturbating all the time. 
Love it. Well said. Very, very well said. Yes, <laughs> su- such an interesting topic, uh, you know, to everyone listening out there as well. Uh, it really is a topic that needs to be spoken about. Uh, people need to realize that gone are the ages where a topic like this becomes so taboo that nobody wants to address it or nobody wants to speak about it. We, we now in, 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 in a century, you know, in a world where people need to be mature enough to be able to handle conversations like this. And the more we can handle conversations like this, who knows, we could go back to that previous generations where we never ever heard of what porn was because we knew that we could take our time and better use it to build our families, uh, build other people, educate other people, you know, things, all good things that can make this world into a better place. Because, Roman, you know, right, uh, just like porn, like drugs, and all of these toxic stuff that has come into the market, it hasn't created a very healthy environment for the world and people that are living in it, right? Especially when it comes to drugs, because once you have drugs, it's going to obviously lead into some kind of addiction, which could be porn, it could be anything as well. So it's really made the place a messy world, you know, in a way, uh, so to speak. So I like what you're doing regarding educating people about this topic. And you even mentioned, you know, your your 13 year old son as well. And I'm sure you have these discussions with him just to educate him a bit more. How many parents out there really have this discussion with their children? Not many, right? Not many, that's for sure. That's for sure. Especially, I think this problem is getting worse now that a lot of, especially in the Western culture, a lot of, uh, a lot of kids, they, they grow, they are raised by single moms and single and moms, they, women don't think that this is a problem. That's why, that's why they would never raise this question. They are, they're not, as I said, they, they don't get addicted to porn as much. That's why they they, they, they just do, don't realize that this could be a problem for their son. And next thing they know, he's been watching it for two or three years and he's super addicted and everything, all areas of his life take a hit. So be, thank you for bringing this up. This is a topic that every parent should talk to, to their kid about. And regularly, it's, it's one, having a, this conversation once is not enough because look, as your teenager, they don't listen to you. So you need to, you know, drip that information on them over time. And, and especially showing them the negative side of it as well. I, I, can, I can understand with single moms not wanting to bring up a topic like this. Maybe they don't know how to approach a 13-year-old, right? Uh, because maybe in, when they were growing up in their household, it was such a taboo topic that nobody really wanted to bring it up or even just to talk about sex back then as well. And now they find it difficult. But these are the parents that we are reaching out to and we're saying that if you are struggling and if you don't know how to speak to your 13-year-old, here are guys that, like Roman, these are certified coaches on the topic. They can give you all the advice out there. They can guide you on this. All you have to do is reach out and be vulnerable enough to say, you know what, Roman, I have a problem with my 13-year-old. How can I go about making sure that his life gets better in time? So, you know, in saying that as well, Roman, how can people get hold of you? What's the easiest, best way? I know we're going to share your information uh, at the end of this chat. Uh, we will we will post it. But how can people get hold of you if they need to by tomorrow or so? <laughs> yes. Thank you for the opportunity to actually share this. So, okay, if you if you need help yourself, if you're struggling with porn addiction, if, or if you're someone who wants to help someone struggle with porn addiction, let me say this, it's possible. When you use help, it is possible to quit. And more, moreover, right now, this addiction is holding you back from realizing your full potential, from getting that success that you want, from getting that relationship that you crave, the real thing, from being having stable dopamine and feeling content about your life instead of going through this dopamine spikes and then going very low again another spike going very low all this is possible if you use a step-by-step system that has been tested many 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 times 
and it, that has shown that it's it's it makes it easier to quit. You can do this yourself. Just go to romanmiranov.com slash free, spelled as R-O-M-A-N-M-I-R-O-N-O-V.com slash free. Get the free porn detox course. It's a guided program, 100% free. You'll also get access to, to talking to me. I'll push you a little bit. and You get a system that you really need to do anything in your life. Just think of goals that Nolan was talking about. When you set goals, you also create your, let's say your motivations for achieving those goals. You write it down, you write a plan, you you think of a system that will support you. Maybe let's say um, a mentoring group or a coach that creates a system for building that goal and quitting porn is another goal. So have that system. Otherwise, if you do it in this haphazard way, you might struggle for years. And instead of doing it, quitting it in three months, you might lose another three years. But look, now, now that you heard this message, you realize that you have the responsibility to actually quit this addiction. No more excuses. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and I think my, my, my thing for the audience would be is, you know, whoever's listening in, just think how much of time you're losing just by being addicted to porn. And then go back and think about what can you really do with that time? What can you do that's really productive for your future? Because like Roman has said, this porn addiction is a temporary thing and it restrains you in so many ways. We spoke about social behaviors, etc. So, you know, think about this, this carefully and get in touch with Roman. It's romanmiranoff.com slash free we will share the information on here as well so roman thank you so much for inspiring us today really good topic that we spoke about i'm grateful that you made we made the time we've been wanting to chat to each other for such a long time i'm grateful that we finally got to speak and any last words or tips for the audience yes definitely guys make sure that you like inspirational journeys because nolan is is working hard to to help you guys. And he, I think he, he, you need to recognize his hard work. I will be, I will do this myself. And if you do it as well, if you join me in doing this, I will, I will really appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it, uh, Roman. It really means a lot. Thank you for that. And, you know, once again, thank you for joining our show to everyone that's listening. Uh, this is going to be on YouTube. So catch the video on YouTube. There's a nice bell on the right hand side. It's to subscribe. So subscribe to our channel once again, so that we can bring you valuable content like the one we brought you today. It's also going to be on Anchor FM, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, you name it. It's all over the show. So please make the time to listen in. And if you do know of anyone, or even if you are struggling with porn addiction, please get in touch with Robin, Roman Muranoff.com and he'll answer all your questions for you as well. So thank you once again for listening to Inspirational Journeys to Life with Straight Talk with Nolan. Roman, thanks once again, and I look forward to most probably having part two of our session as well. Thank you. Cool, thank you.